A unique opportunity to demonstrate the hydrology of the Lake Creek system was discovered during the Columbia Basin Groundwater Management Area's geologic mapping investigation. In Lincoln County, a local resident came forward with two aerial videotapes of the Lake Creek system, shot by the KXLY news crew helicopter on two separate occasions, in the February of 1995, and again two and a half years later in July of 1997. The hydrologic and geologic relevance and significance of this comparison will become readily apparent as we progress through the Lake Creek system. We're about three miles west of Odessa, Washington, where Lake Creek enters Crab Creek. You're looking at two videos. The one on the left shows the Lake Creek system, which has been dry since the mid-1980s after having had water in it for thousands of years. On the right is a video shot in July 1997 when higher precipitation than normal resulted in a significant one-time winter and spring runoff event that filled the surface water drainages of the Lake Creek system. As we continue north, we come to Bob's Lake, which is approximately two miles long, and as you can see, was empty in the winter of 1995, but full in the summer of 1997 after the significant winter precipitation and runoff. Bob's Lake is the first of 12 lakes in the Lake Creek system, which has thousands of acres of lake surface with tens of thousands of acre feet of water storage. Most of the lakes have been dry since the 1980s. The Lake Creek Coulee system and these lakes formed when the Missoula floods occurred thousands of years ago, washing away layers of basalt lava flows. The basalt columns seen lining the Coulee walls mark these exposed basalt layers. Groundwater aquifers occur between these layers and occur about every 100 to 200 feet as you go from the top of the Cooley Wall to the bottom. These groundwater aquifers, which occur in what are called interflow zones, carry surface water into the aquifers, recharging the aquifer system. When the lakes are dry, as shown on the left, there is no recharge to the exposed interflow zones to carry water into the aquifers. Historically, the lakes remained full year-round because the interflow zones were full and couldn't take any additional water. However, since the 1960s, high groundwater usage has depleted the previously full interflow zones. As a result, these lakes no longer maintain their historical levels. As we arrive at Upper Bob's Lake, we see water in both videos, demonstrating how deep this lake is and how connected it is to interflow zones. But in 1995, this water was soon to disappear as the lake went dry about 12 months later. Coming up in the distance is Delzer Falls, which as you can see is dry in 1995 but flowing in the summer of 1997 after being dry for more than a decade. Residents have seen Delzer Falls flowing at significant levels, suggesting this was a very active system. The exposed basalt layers found in the Cooley Walls below Delzer Falls and on the surface across which the creek flows provide recharge opportunities to the basalt interflow zones. It is apparent that if the creek flow was higher and the lakes were full, this area would have additional stream channels and provide recharge into the aquifers. We're now approaching Walter Lake, which is completely dry on the left and full on the right. On the far side of Walter Lake, is the original Lakeview Ranch and Homestead, which was sold to the Federal Bureau of Land Management with expectations that this property would be beneficial for fishing and recreation. As we approach the lower end of Pacific Lake, we can see the boat launch and recreational facilities on the far side of the lake created by the Bureau of Land Management. Pacific Lake has been a premier fishing and recreational destination for many years. The lake, which is over a mile long and half a mile wide, contains over 30,000 acre feet of water when it's full, as it was in 1997. Obviously, in 1995 it was completely dry with no opportunities for water sports and recreation. As we enter the upper portion of Pacific Lake, which again was full of water for thousands of years, you can see tall columnar basalt structures along the wall of the lake that mark each basalt layer, between which basalt aquifer recharge can occur. The Lake Creek system 
filled the lake early in the spring of 1997. The creek continued to flow into the lake throughout November. Once the creek quit flowing and adding additional water, the lake began to recede. The lake drained completely in about 12 months. The entire 30,000 acre feet drained into the basalt interflow zones in the bottom of the lake. Residents reported huge whirlpools in the lake as it drained into the basalt interflow zones. The most active whirlpool zones were observed near the base of the basalt walls on the far side of the lake, below the white chalky mineral deposits shown on the lake walls. Reports by nearby well owners indicate that their wells dropped in the mid-1980s but responded positively to the lake filling in 1997. These same wells deteriorated again in 1998 when the lake dried up, indicating a hydrologic connection between these wells and the lake. These two videos show the impact of the loss of the ecosystem supported by the Lake Creek system. It is apparent that this system cannot currently be sustained by natural precipitation. At the rate the current interflow zones can absorb water, it will require additional water into the system to keep them full. The Columbia Basin Groundwater Management Area is participating in evaluating the impact of rehydrating this system.